Provisioning devices at scale is a complex problem. Azure IoT provides a device provisioning service, but you need a layer on top. And Device Authority, and James is actually from Device Authority, uh, has a nice solution for you that we'll talk about on the IoT show today. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the IoT show. Today we will talk about provisioning IoT devices at scale in real life with James from Device Authority. James, thanks for, for making the trip here to yeah, the no US. Problem. And Thank you uh, for thanks for joining the show. So before we get into the topic, James, can you introduce yourself to our audience and what Device Authority does? Sure. Um, so my name is James Penny. I'm the CTO of uh, Device Authority. And we have a platform called Keyscaler that really is designed to help um, provide device trust, data trust, and then operationalize that, that trust at scale. Okay. So one of the common scenarios that our audience is familiar with is building IoT application end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is very critical in terms of security and device maintenance and management is having these devices provisioned with credentials to connect and then interact with the cloud. Yeah. So we have a solution in a platform way on Azure uh, called the Device Provisioning Service that pairs with IoT Hub. And um, because that's the platform, we like to have partners like you actually bringing that platform to actual solutions uh, for their customers or joint customers. So can you tell me a bit more about you know, your adoption of Azure IoT as a platform, or I suppose that you are actually supporting the various cloud providers out there for your customers, uh, but how you're actually approaching device provisioning service on Azure, uh, what are the benefits that you can share with our audience, uh, and what is, what is your impression as well with our technology in that area? Yeah, um, so I will say, you know, we, we do support a lot of different cloud providers. Um, first and foremost, you know, our platform is very extensible. Uh, but what we've seen is a is a quite a shift um, to Azure as a as a provider, the cloud mm -hmm. service provider, and the associated Azure services. So so we've actually um, you know spent a lot of time focusing on on Azure as a as from an integration perspective mm -hmm. with with our platform um, Keyscaler, and and that's kind of led to to what we have uh, to look at today. And um, and I think the experience and, and what we found is just that Azure's appears to be really easy to, to integrate with. Uh, I mean, all the, the REST APIs and, and, and the way that the, um, we can kind of interact and get what we need out of it has made our development time pretty swift. I mean, we can turn out new integrations and service connectors in a number of days. And we didn't strong arm you to say that. You definitely right? <laughs> you did not. You did not. I, li I like to hear that because we're all about simplifying IoT in general. So if we're helping simplifying that area of provisioning devices securely on that scale, that, that's awesome. So what are the specific verticals you guys are seeing a big interest for your platform and that eventually you're specialized in? Yeah, so uh, a lot of our interest has been in, um, or our customers' interest has been in industrial healthcare, and actually automotive as well. Okay. Um, so we actually, as, as uh, Microsoft and, and Device Authority, have a number of joint customers in, in all of those verticals. Um, you know, healthcare uh, is an easy one to, to explain because there's mm -hmm. obvious patient safety risks uh, with connected medical devices. Um, and, you know, industrial and automotive, uh, uh, automotive for a start is quite a nice, attractive looking mm -hmm. use case. So, um, and there's obviously you don't want someone driving along and, and, and hacking their car while they're on the freeway at 70 miles per no, hour. You so, <laughs> no, you definitely don't. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would say those three are probably where we've got the most traction uh, mm -hmm. for this technology. Um, yeah. Interesting. So, tell me a bit about what it takes to actually securely provision a device, mm -hmm. and and you'll show that with uh, Keyscaler how that looks like in terms of you know uh, the implementation and how a customer yeah. would use the product yeah. to safe securely pro uh, provision one of the devices. Yeah, um, you know, I think DPS has a lot of existing really good security built into it, right? Mm -hmm. There's X509 support and, and you have symmetric key support as well for enrolling the devices. And all we're really doing is building on that platform of what you guys already have mm -hmm. to, to kind of help automate it and make it a little bit more dynamic through the technology that we provide. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we'll see, we, I don't have to uniquely key anything into all of my devices mm -hmm. um, or, or touch each one as a, as a um, like there's not enough humans in some use cases to actually do that. Yep. So we can, we can provide this base build of software that we push onto the devices and then actually dynamically provision them at the back end with information that we might know about the device and 
from there use that as a springboard to give it the right credentials to connect to, to DPS and IoT Hub. Awesome. Enough talking. Let's see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is the Keyscaler control panel. Um, as at the moment, I don't have any devices provisioned into this particular tenant mm -hmm. in this system. I also have uh, over here is a, a Azure DPS instance, okay. um, which uh, at the moment, if we just jump into here, there are no uh, enrollments existing okay. in this, this process. So we're starting from a blank sheet. Mm -hmm. And also in this IoT hub, which yeah. is where our device will eventually end up after, mm -hmm. after connecting if to everything GPS. goes well. <laughs> <laughs> don't jinx it. Um, <laughs> where we, uh, we don't have any devices in mm -hmm. here either. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create um, a device provisioning record okay. inside of Keyscaler. So what's, the, what's the typical user of that interface? Is it the device maker? Is it the hospital if you're in the healthcare scenario? What's the user of that user? That's a great question. Are? So it's, it's typically the device maker. That's yeah. who we tend to interact with. Those okay. guys are providing the security, as they should, mm -hmm. um, for their devices, uh, for their customers. Got so it. they're, okay. they're yeah, okay, providing the most secure mm -hmm. solution they can. Um, so you can kind of see what we can do here. We can you know, use several bits of identifying information and we can extend this um, mm -hmm. for our customers where, where the information is available. But today I'm really just going to use a simple MAC address, um, which probably wouldn't just use standalone in production, but that's what we'll do. So Good for demos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I have my virtual um, kind of demo here, yeah. uh, or demo device mm -hmm. that we're going to connect to this instance and just pretend there's a physical device in front of me and mm -hmm. use your imagination. Um, is it fair to say that we would recommend using uh, hardware secure modules to actually have secret seed actually to extract like a TPM or something to integrate into uh, you know, the, the, the process rather than having data that actually can easily be retrieved yeah. by a hacker, right? Yeah, so uh, a, and a TPM or something like that is, is definitely something that we would recommend where available because mm -hmm. um, yep. all it does is uh, when, you, when you look at what we're doing here and, and uh, um, the way that the technology works in querying the physical properties of a mm -hmm. device, yeah. the more that you have, the, the higher your security posture. So anything like a TPM um, is really just going to help you get that greater level of security when those devices come on board. Makes sense. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to put in an authorization identifier um, to explain that's really almost like a OTP or a one-time password some people use that for. Okay. Um, and this is our device group. So Devices get enrolled into groups. Mm -hmm. Policies get applied to groups. Okay. Um, and and we're going to take a look at what the policy is in a second. But uh, and then I'll just give it a nice easy name. Perfect. Uh, so we've created a record, mm -hmm. and now what we have is a single record. Only a device kind of matching those attributes will be able to enroll with us. Okay. And because it's dynamic, again, I don't need to go in and uniquely key anything. We can get it straight from the device when it registers. Okay. Um, just to quickly take a look before I do that, uh, this is my certificate provisioning policy. So mm -hmm. in, this, in this particular instance, what we want to use is X509 certificates to connect our devices to DPS. Okay. So I have a policy here that is applied to our device group. Mm -hmm. And what it's saying is uh, we're, we want to provide kind of PKI signed certificates to these devices. Um, we're going to provision them to Azure DPS, mm -hmm. um, so we have a, our connector set up. Yep. We've specified a certificate authority. We have plenty of integrations with public CAs, private CA instances as well. Okay. Um, we have our validity period for that certificate, and we can auto manage the rotation and the uh, renewal of those certificates as okay. the device goes on for the entire um, life cycle of that device. Nice. Yeah, because that's one of the things that actually is super important. Like the initial provisioning mm -hmm. uh, is not sufficient to ensure the system is secure. Absolutely. Along, uh, uh, over time, actually, you need to implement these rules that actually, uh, like this one, such as like mm -hmm. renewing the, the certs or rotating the keys or so on, right? Yeah. yeah and, and I think the general nature of IoT, obviously, is the devices kind of sit external to your traditional perimeter, right? Mm. So, so they could probably be under constant attack. So, yeah. you know, uh, anything that allows you to keep people guessing, rotating the credentials, you're absolutely correct. Totally. You, it's definitely something you want to implement. Um, in the, the last kind of section here, we have auto revocation as well. So through the system and um, through kind of various integrations with, with Azure rules and things mm -hmm. like that and functions, we can 
um, quarantine or, or, or kind of delete a device yeah. and, and kick it out of the system. And in the same kind of breath, we'll reach into the associated Azure DPS service okay. and, and pull the certificate back out, IoT Hub, wherever it might have been provisioned. So one, one level interaction here and the device will be out of the IoT app on Azure altogether. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got yep. it. Um, okay, so we've created our registration control record. We have our connector and our policy all set up. Mm -hmm. The last thing I really have to do is just run this. And as you know, or as you may have seen, security demos are very underwhelming when they <laughs> just work. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so this one is kind of broken down. But as we go through this, um, I, I think the, the key kind of point to remember is this would traditionally be headless. So yep. you wouldn't have a user interacting with this yeah, totally. or needing to touch the device. Totally. Yeah. So there's quite a lot going on here, but this kind of big block of data, and it's encrypted, so I can't really yep. unlock it and show you. <laughs> um, but that's our registration process. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of taken a device fingerprint, if you like, mm -hmm. and checked it against the record that we created. OK. And that record in here. So you have your, your own agent for device set of things, right? Yeah, we yep. have a, a library and, and agents as well. So okay. there's okay. different kind of ways to, to mm -hmm. cut it and implement it. But mm -hmm. yes, there's, it's a client server architecture. Yes. Um, so our registration record has been burned. It's been closed off. Mm -hmm. No one else can consume it. Mm -hmm. um, and we have our device successfully registered now, but our certificate status is waiting on device. Mm -hmm. um, so if we just jump to the next step, we can see that the, we successfully registered with Keyscaler, mm -hmm. and the next step is actually to go through that provisioning process. Okay. Um, so if I hit return, and there's a lot that kind of goes on here, but you can briefly see, I'll just scroll up, uh, certificate signing request. So mm -hmm. Keyscaler said, thanks for registering. You owe me a certificate signing request so that I can yep. get it signed and push it into DPS. Okay. So it submitted that request. Mm -hmm. And then it has actually slept for 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And the device then eventually, you can see here, got back from Keyscaler the signed certificate. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that it's actually been pushed into DPS as well. Okay. So um, we can take a look at this. Firstly, if I just refresh this page, our certificate status says delivered. Okay. And if we go look in DPS. You have a new enrollment that's been added for the yes. device. Yes. So we have right. my device 001. And it's not been assigned yet because we haven't connected to IoT Got Hub yep. or to DPS yep. to consume mm -hmm. it. Um, we can see it's using X509 and the thumbprint's in there for our certificate. Okay. So actually, from this point on, we're kind of stepping out of the equation. And mm -hmm. this is just your traditional. In between device and DPS. Yeah, this is yep. your traditional kind of uh, DPS provisioning process. So yep. we'll, we'll use the yep. certificate. So you're basically handing out from the Keyscaler library to the SDKs that we provide yeah, for correct. on the device side of things. Okay. Correct. Um, so we got assigned a, a, an IoT hub after mm -hmm. we used that certificate to connect yeah. to DPS. And then it connects and just starts sending start some sending dumb data. Yeah. Not, not that much underwhelming. I mean, this is, this is pretty, pretty interesting because all these things that have been done automatically, like just, and just with a simple interaction through the, the Keyscaler UI, the things that developers today do manually mm -hmm. a lot. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sure they, they, uh, they like it. They like <laughs> what you just saw. I love it. Yeah. And we, um, so there's a, a number of kind of integrations there. And also from that, mm -hmm. you mentioned the, the kind of manual processes yeah, of yeah. things. There's the APIs as well that can drive our system. So everything that we kind of saw can also be taken out and automated into existing processes to kind of help you on your way. Awesome. And I, and I love the idea of having this solution that allows you to basically aggregate devices from several manufacturers or, or sources and different also types of encryption you can use or, or configuration for the security. All, all devices are not equal mm -hmm. in terms of what they can do, yep. what they can store, what they can encrypt, decrypt, and so forth. So it's very interesting to have a one um, stop shop for everything security or provisioning yep. with Keyscaler. I love that. So uh, if people want to learn more, we have a link, which is aka.ms slash IoT show slash device authority. Yep. Uh, and in there, you learn a lot about what you can do is the integration with DPS uh, to complement your Azure IoT solution. James, one last word to our audience. Uh, thank you for listening, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. I like to give the closing with that surprise question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching the IoT show. Don't forget to subscribe.